Hi, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure being here. I really envy you so much because I guess you're either sitting there or even lying on the sofa, but I have to stand here and tell you the truth. I haven't had my dinner yet, so I'm kind of low blood pressure and uh, my leg is kind of shaking. So if I look absent-minded, please bear with me. And welcome to the 2020 International Sports Affair training course. This is the 10th year we offer this course. This course is totally designed by the Chinese Taipei Olympic Academy. This academy was founded 42 years ago because of our effort and we worked so hard. And last year we won the Athena Award. And the award really encouraged us because we feel our effort and our contribution being recognized. So I would like to be here to share with the joy. Okay, have to start the course. Um, before I really start the course, let me warn you first. You might want to push the pause button first and take a five minute break to get a coffee or even a Red Bull because for the following two hours, this is going to be very, very, very boring. Why I say this is going to be very, very boring because I'm going to tell you about the history, the politics, anything you don't like. And I guess nobody likes that. And there are laughters and there are also tears, a lot of tears in there. And we are not very happy. So whenever I got a chance to interact with friends on this issue, I don't feel very good. So this is the International Sports Affair training course. I think you guys are very lucky to be here because there is so much effort being put in the training course and the lecture we invited this year is excellent. It's really excellent, except me, of course. And the topic I'm going to share with you is called Olympic model. This is something really, really special because among the hundreds of national Olympic committees, we are the only one who has this kind of story and has this kind of Olympic model. And what is Olympic model? If I go this, if I go this, let me share with you the overture of the story. So I call it this Olympic Committee. Why I call that this Olympic Committee? Because starting right now, you will hear so many names of the Olympic Committee. So in the very first beginning, I really have a hard time to choose which name to use. So let me tell you first, where comes this Olympic Committee? This Olympic Committee was founded actually 1922. 1992, it was almost 100 years ago. Actually, next year will be our 100th birthday. So feel happy for us. So at the very first beginning, the name of this Olympic Committee was called China National Amateur Athlete Federation. In Chinese, we call it Zhonghua Yeyu Yun Dong Lian He Hui. And in the same year, kind of lucky, this federation was recognized by the International Olympic Committee and as the NOC of China, as the National Olympic Committee of China, you might be feel kind of weird, especially for those young people. Why that's NOC of China? Because at that time, we have only one China. There's no two China issue. There's no one China policy. So there's only one China. So we've been recognized the NOC of China by IOC at the 21st and annual session at, at Paris. And at that time, the president, Dr. Wang Zhengting, who was also the minister of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, he was the president of this federation and also as the NOC's president. On July 1924, this National Amateur Athlete Federation was established at Nanjing, to replace the original one. However, the English name remains the same. And very, very soon, this new federation and this new association was recognized by the International Olympic Committee as the NOC of China. So you see, what a happy day. No sad story at all. Everything was so smooth. Everybody was very, very happy. And this China National Amateur Athlete Federation is now the Zhonghua Mingguo Tiyu Yun Dong Zhonghui, as you know as the Zhonghua Tizong, so 
Tizong got the very long history to go to. So the happy overture. Okay. In this topic, we will try to tell where comes this Chinese Taipei Olympic Committee? Where comes this one? And there are several important points you have to pay real attention. One is on the year 1981, there is an agreement between the International Olympic Committee, the IOC at Lausanne, and the Chinese Taipei Olympic Committee at Taipei. This play a really major role for the recent years. And the second one is the statue of Chinese Taipei Olympic Committee. We call that Zhonghua Taipei Aowei Hui de Hui Zhang. Hui Zhang. And the article one says, the statues of the National Olympic Committee, which is the NOC, are specified on basis of the Olympic Charter and the fundamental principles of the Olympism. Why do I have to say that? Because that tells you what kind of role we are playing. So we are from the line. We are the real member, although the name you might don't like it, but we are really the player in there. And for Article 2, the National Olympic Committee is called Chinese Taipei Olympic Committee. And pursuant to agreement between International Olympic Committee and the committee on the 23rd March 1981. So that gave us the legal stance point of view. So this is legitimate. So we are the real one, and we are the only one. Be proud of that. OK, next, on the year 2017, the government passed a new law called National Sports Act. We call that Guoming Tiyu Fa, which was the first time gave the Chinese Taipei Olympic Committee a legal stand. So in the chapter five, we have a specific chapter for Chinese Taipei Olympic Committee. And let's specify our rights, our obligation, and what kind of regulation we have to follow, which is very important. So starting the year 2017, we finally legalized. Surprise, right? Before that, we don't, well, tell you that later. <laughs> okay, Chinese Taipei. I mean, is there anyone there who like this name? If you like this name, please raise your hand. Raise your hand. I remember last year when I was interact with the student on this issue, I asked them, is there anyone don't like this name? So I was the first one who raised my hand. And then everyone down there raised their hand. So apparently nobody likes this name. How sad. That's our name and we don't like it. We don't like it. Are we so special? Are we so weird? Are we the only ones who don't like this name? Let's see. Oh, this guy, you must know him. President Xi, he raised his hand too. He doesn't like that name. Why? What kind of name he will like? Of course, he wants to be part of the China Olympic Committee, right? Because one China policy, so he will raise his hand. If he didn't raise his hand, he's gone for good. Is he the only one? Oh, Mr. Han Guoyu just stepped down from the mayor position of Kaohsiung. Of course, he doesn't like that. He doesn't like that. He doesn't like that. Why? Because I believe, he believes China and Taiwan should have a very good relationship in the future. So Chinese Taipei, what is Chinese Taipei? Is that Chinese or Taipei? And can we find the country? with the name Chinese Taipei. If you got one, please let me know. Thank you. Oh, those are old men. Do we have any female, any lady who doesn't like that name? Oh, a president. Of course she doesn't like that. Guess what? What kind of name will she really love to in the bottom of her heart? Taiwan Olympic Committee. Are you surprised with the answer? Don't give me that face. You're not surprised at all. I know that very well. Anyway, nobody liked this name. Then why are we still using this name? Look at the history. Look at the history. We used to use these names. Are they familiar with you? Republic of China, how proud of that. 
That's the official name of this country, Republic of China. We used that name before. I'll show you later. We also use the name Taiwan. I guess nowadays the young people in this country, they like Taiwan. Most of people here like Taiwan. We're here. So Taiwan is the place we were born, we grew up. So Taiwan is definitely very good. Also, we use the Formosa, beautiful island. Taiwan is definitely a beautiful island. So in the past, we used the Republic of China. We used Taiwan. Also, we used Formosa. But how come nowadays we have used this weird Chinese Taipei? So what's wrong with that? So do we have still have to use this weird name? Can we change that? So let's change it. Let's change it. Let's change it. Remember that? There is a referendum called name recertification referendum for Taiwan's Olympic team that happens on the year 2018. Finally, we get the result. And there are over 5 million voters disagree for the name change. And there are almost 5 million agree with the name change. They are so close. What kind of the weird name Chinese Taipei is? Do we have a better choice? Yes, we do. Look at the past. From history, we know. We used to use the name Republic of China. Hey, the official name of this country. For how long? You haven't heard this name. This name is basically replaced by this country. But however, this is the official name of this country, Republic of China. We used that name before. And then used the name Taiwan. I guess nowadays, a lot of people really prefer Taiwan to Republic of China. But anyway, we did have the opportunity to use Taiwan, and we did use that. And last one, especially for older generation, they probably love this name very much. Formosa means a beautiful island. What a beautiful island we are here. We are so lucky to be part of this beautiful island. So since we do have the opportunity to use these names, why do we have to stick with Chinese Taipei, this weird name? So why can we change that? Of course, it's all right. This is a free country. So let's change it. Let's change it. How to do that? See, in the year 2018, there is a name rectification referendum for Taiwan's Olympic team. Some people, they believe Japan is so friendly to us. And the 2020 Olympic game, well, it's deferred to the 2021, but still called the 2020 Olympic Games will be held in Tokyo. And some of our Japanese friends suggest us, why not you use this opportunity to change the name? So they took the suggestion and brought that issue for a referendum vote. Well, on early morning of November 25th of 2018, the result comes out and there are over 5 million people vote for disagree. They want to stick with the Chinese Taipei. But look, they are also very close to 5 million voters. They agreed the name change. Among all the referendum voting, this is the one that has the closest result. So this is this time. Anyway, the result here, we have to stick with the Chinese Taipei, Zhonghua Taipei. But what's wrong? What's wrong? Um, are, are those five million people brain damaged? They don't like the name. Why did they vote for disagree? Why? Very difficult to get it, right? Let's see why. Before we get into this story, spend a little bit time to talk about the Olympic movement. Olympic movement. So in order to be part of the Olympic movement, you have to be part of the Olympic family who got the right to become a member of the Olympic family. First, Olympic family, the big brother, or we say the father or mother, the big brother is the International Olympic Committee. And down under, we have the Continental Olympic Committee 
for example, like OCA, Olympic Council of Asia, and also we have some other non-government organization, NGOs. And then we have one of the major roles, National Olympic Committee, we call NOC. In Chinese, we call that 国家以及地区的奥会. So why this country and area, for example, Hong Kong is a member of IOC. And Hong Kong is not the country. So it was counted an area. And how about us? How about us? Oh, there is something very interesting. You'll find out. And the IOC is full of wisdom to deal with this issue. We get to that very quick. OK, so this is core of IOC. Who's in the core? Who plays the core role or the major role in the IOC? Oh, it's moving. It's very dynamic all the time. So because the, the world is full of surprise. OK, for the IOC, the major player is the member. And it is regulated. The number of members has to be less than 115. And of course, there's an executive board. So you have to become a member and then elected to the elect executive board. And then there comes the big brother of president, President Bach. President Bach. Oh, very nice gentleman. I met him several times. Of course, he, he didn't know me. I, I know him very well. And there, of course, the administration party in that office, they're located in Lausanne. And all the people there, they are so knowledgeable, work very hard. And for those people, they deal with the whole world. I think they're a lot busier than most of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in a lot of countries. Well, they're the hero without sounds. So show them our respect. They are great. They are great. So this is the inner circle. This is the inner circle. So who comes to the next? Who comes to the next? OK. There's a code Olympic Solidarity. It's a foundation. So there is a lot of money there. But IOC is very rich, very rich. Why the IOC has to be so rich? Because the IOC need a lot of funding to support those poor country. So the poor country can have the equal opportunity as those rich country to raise their athletes to have the opportunity to participate in all those games. So of course, IOC needs money. And although they are good, they are good. They are really good, trust me, trust me. So if you want to learn some business model, learn the IOC model. Not too many people know about that, they are great. Oops, I say something I shouldn't say, I guess. And of course, there are commissions and uh, working groups because they have to deal with some many special issues. So there are some commission and special groups, and uh, they are holding several several meetings every year. So the the whole IOC body, the members, they are very very busy. They flew here, there, everywhere. Everybody was so busy. It, it's a very tough job, but it's a great honor. It's a great honor. But you have to work so hard. You have to work so hard. And of course, there are a museum located at Lausanne. I was there. Last year, during the winter time, amazing, amazing. There are so much history in there, and there are so much technology in there, and you see the interaction before the ancient Olympic and the modern Olympic. They are everywhere. You have to go there once. You have to go there once. Otherwise, you'll be very sorry. You'll be sorry. So it's highly recommended. It's just on the lakeside. It's very beautiful. Now, of course, the building is beautiful too. So we've seen two circles of IOC already. Do you think that's the end of the story? No, no. We haven't seen any athlete. We haven't seen any NOC. We haven't seen any International Sports Federation. So here comes the third circle. So who's there? Let's see. OK, first we see the International Sports Federation. Those are so important. There are so many international sports federations. They educated, they raised so many athletes, so make the world of athletes so colorful. So thanks to them. Who's there? Oh, organizing committee of the Olympic Games. What's that? So remember, for every four years, we have the Summer Olympic Games. 
So in one city, so the city and the country together with IOC, they will form a organizing committee of, of the Olympic game. And also for the winter game, they have this kind of organization too. So they are very important. So without them, we will not have any Olympic games. Thank you. Do we have anyone? Oh, that's our NOC. So here comes the National Olympic Committee. And there are 206. And probably speaking, Chinese Taipei Olympic Committee is one of them. No more, no less. We enjoy the normative right exactly the same as the other 205 NOCs. So we are one of them. Although you don't like the name, but we do have the right as they do. Have we finished? Oh no, yeah. Hopefully this is the last circle. Okay, this is something, if you don't respect them, you, you'd better like them. We call that the top partner and the local sponsor and supplier. What is that? Those are the people or the enterprise who supported IOC. Supported with what? With their heart. No, with their pocket, with their pocket. Okay, for the top one, oh, I don't want to make any commercial for them because they didn't pay me. So you can Google. Those are some top. And you know how much you, you have to pay every year to become a top? I don't know because there's no way for me to make that money in my entire life. No way, no way. <clears throat> <clears throat> they are so important, excuse me. <clears throat> then we have the National Sport <clears throat> Association and clubs. So that's the national level. And we have the international level on the third circle. So we have the national level on the fourth circle. And then, of course, we have the athlete, we have the judges and everything, and all the technical person, all the doctors, because the athlete needs a lot of support. If you believe a game is very easy, you are totally wrong. You are totally wrong. A game is so difficult. For example, the Tokyo Olympic game, there will be more than 10,000 athletes. It's just the athlete. So if you're counting the coaches, the doctors, the administrative persons, and the spectator, everything, there are, there are more than hundreds of people will be part of the game. It's, it's very complicated. That's why they have to determine which city will hold the next game seven years before. So usually a city needs like seven years together with IOC to prepare for Olympic game. See how difficult is that? Media, how can we forget that? Media is very, very important. If the game looks good, thanks to media. If the game looks bad, please make it look good, media. Don't forget that. <clears throat> okay, so all the International Federation, <clears throat> Continental Olympic Committee, and NOC, they don't become the member. They don't become part of the family automatically. They have to apply for the recognition. So once they get recognized as the member, as part of the family, it can enjoy normative rights which were listed on the Olympic Charter, very sick, very sick. And if you want to look at the Chinese version, go to the website of the Chinese Taipei Olympic Committee, our website, you can download that. And hopefully you have the patience to read that. Of course, on the other hand, you have to fulfill due obligations, and this is a must. So in the meantime, in the meantime, we are talking about the international level. Domestically speaking, on the national level. So the National Federation, member of the IFs, can also enjoy the normative rights and do have to fulfill the due obligation too. So that you have the normative right, and you also have obligation. So that makes the balance. So you don't just go there to enjoy. You go over there also to contribute. So that makes the athlete world so beautiful and so colorful. And of course, in Taiwan, we have the National Sports Act to 
to regulate the Chinese Taipei Olympic Committee. We have a special chapter, it's chapter five. It regulates specifically to the Chinese Taipei Olympic Committee and from Article 27 through Article 29. Okay, finally we're here talking about Olympic model. That means up to now, everywhere I speak was nonsense. Okay, let's get to the point. So what is Olympic model? Where did it come from? And this is some tier will come from here. So before we start that, please remember these three very important points in time. Remember that. One is 1911. 1911. That's the year our country was born. Okay, you remember that, hopefully. And the second one is 1949. 1949. So the Republic of China's government moved from mainland China to Taiwan. And the third one, the third one, 1971. So Republic of China lost the representation rights in the United Nations. Those three very important points in time plays a major role in our story. Okay, so the happy area is from the year 1911 to 1949. That was very happy, no problem at all. No problem at all, because there's only one China. Okay, so ROC was China. There's no second China. So everything is so happy. Everything was so happy. Oops. On the year 1949 through year 1971, oh, we have a problem. Who is China? Is that a stupid question? You tell me. Who is China? Is those big guys on the other side of the strait, are they China? Or a younger one like us in Taiwan are China? So if you want to look at this problem from the political point of view, from the historical point of view, from what kind of blood we have, and what kind of culture we have. Am I confusing you? Yes, I'm trying to do that. So this is a very, very complicated problem. Who is China? Who is China? In 1949, like we just mentioned, the Republic of China government moved from mainland China to Taiwan. So there is a government there. And we have a government here. So who's China? Who's China? They believe they are China, and we strongly believe we are the real China at that time, at the real time, okay? So this is really bad, but if you think this is bad enough, no. It's even worse, starting the year 1971, oh my God, oh my God, for what? I'll tell you later. The worst one is right now. The worst one is right now. There's problem is who is China at the same time is who am I? Who am I? Tell me, who am I? So some of the people on this island believe we are Republic of China. But some people believe we are Taiwan. Of course, for some government official, they say we are Republic of China, Taiwan. And in the Olympic Committee, we are Chinese Taipei. And maybe there's some other name, we don't know. China Taipei, oh, better not. That's really disgusting. Don't do that, don't do that, okay? Olympic model. Okay, look at the year 1922, 1922. Back into the 100 year ago, the Chinese Olympic Committee was founded and recognized by the International Olympic Committee. This is getting really boring. Those are history. Okay, so you want to get a coffee, get a Red Bull, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, and at the year 1924, again, although this organization changed the name and uh, we are still recognized as the National Olympic Committee, and in the year 1924, we are in the Olympic Game, Paris. And we do use the name 
China. That was French. Okay, that was French. We don't call China French. This is ch just China. And in the year 1932, the Olympic game was in Los Angeles, United States. We are China. So if you really hate China so much, but sorry, at that time, we are China. So don't hate ourselves. Okay. Year 1936, Olympic Games in Berlin, Germany. We are also China, still China. In the year 1941, the game closed. Why? Look at this. I hate this one. The Japanese invaded China. And we are only inches away from World War II. Remember that. Remember that. That's part of the history, okay? Although we do have a lot of Japanese good friends. But at that time, that's what they did, okay? Year 1944 came also close because that's the war time. World War II was still ongoing. Finally, at the year 1948, Olympic Games, London, what a lovely place with lots of culture event there. And United Kingdom, we are still called China. So the Chinese Olympic Committee at that time, that means us. China, that was us. It's all us. No problem. No problem. No argument. Okay? And no one in the world has any second opinion on that. It's just Chinese, Chinese Olympic Committee. China. <clears throat> Those are us. Happy? Uh-oh. 1949. Let's start struggling. In 1949, the Republic of China government moved to Taiwan due to some, well, I don't want to speak of that. It's sad. Okay, so look at what happened. <clears throat> in the year 1952, the Olympic game in Helsinki, Finland, fin Finland. So we use the name Chinese Olympic Committee, National Amateur Athlete Federation. And IOC, you see, let's recall, at the year 1949, there are two China already. One on that side, the other on this side. We both claim we are the real China. So 1952, that, give, that gave IOC a really hard time. So, so who's China? Uh, you guys cannot solve the problem. So what can I do? So the IOC, the smart IOC said, OK, OK, OK. So, both sides can come to the Olympic game. You both are welcome. No, we don't dance with the enemy. Remember in Chinese we say, Han zei bu liang li. So the mainland China was in the game. So we're out. We don't want to be with you. It's a shame. So we're out. Okay. Year 1956, the Olympic Games at Melbourne. Australia, and we use the name Formosa, China. Haha, <laughs> this time it's our turn. And the People's Republic of China, they are not happy. This time, they don't want to dance with us, so they're out. So we were in the game, so it's quite even. So last time we were out, this time they're out. So is that a, a model we build up? Sorry, no, this is just the beginning of the chaos, okay? It's just the beginning of the chaos. 1959, removal of the Chinese National Olympic Committee was determined by the International Olympic Committee. So the IOC decided to remove us from the family, or say remove the name. But, but, you say, I don't like your name, but you guys are okay. So if you change your name, you are still very, very welcome to be part of family. So we are given two choices. One is use Formosa. The other is use Taiwan. So from today's point of view, gosh, wonderful. Formosa, Taiwan. Either one is a lot better than Chinese Taipei. But please do remember, at that time, at that time, we are competing with mainland China on the representation of China because we do believe we are China. And of course, they believe they are China. And we believe 
for the 5,000 year Chinese history, we are the one follow this line. So we are the real Chinese, we are the real China. And of course they don't agree. So from the political point of view, it's really a chaos. So which country is China? I think still up to, up to date, this problem is not solved. But however, however, the IOC decided to remove the name of Chinese National Olympic Committee and suggest us to use the name Formosa or Taiwan. And if we use the name, they will recognize as the National Olympic Committee. And at the year 1960, and uh, IOC determined to recognize Olympic Committee of the Republic of China. Oh, how nice, but, but the point is here, but this Olympic Committee of the Republic of China didn't represent China and could use only the name Taiwan. Oh, how weird, how weird. So your name is the Republic of China, but your name is not Republic of China. Let me repeat again. Your name is Republic of China, but your name is Taiwan. I mean, what kind of name is that? I don't get it. I just don't get it. So what did the government do? What did the government do? Of course, we don't, we don't take that. We don't take that. And it's kind of struggling and very difficult. So they ask you to change your name and tells you if you change the name, they will recognize you and uh, you can be part of the family again. You can participate the Olympic Games. In the year 1960, after some negotiation, the game, the Olympic game was at Rome, Italy, and we used the name Formosa. We used the name Formosa. But however, however, we don't like that. So we are under protest. So see this one? Under protest. Under protest. So this is a very valuable photo. But tell, tell you the truth. Are we, were we using the name Formosa? We are not 100% sure because the, <clears throat> we cannot find the official document. The reason we guess we use the Formosa is because France was behind us. So <clears throat> under F, so we must be used the Formosa. That's why we say we are using Formosa and uh, under protest, under protest. Okay, year 1964, 1964. That was the Japan, the first time Japan in Tokyo held the Olympic game. And some of the arena and the venue used in that Olympic game are still there. I was there last year to visit all the construction and all the preparation for the 2020 Olympic games. And they show us all the historic site. And even for one of the hotel on the beach side, it was there, 1964, and was used for the athlete village. And it's still there. Of course, they remodeled, but how nice, you know, how nice. So 1964, we went to Tokyo, and we used the name Taiwan. You must be thinking, I mean, what does that mean? Taiwan, and then Zhonghua Mingguo. I have the same question as you do when I first prepared for this presentation. So I went ask my colleague and ask some senior Professors, they say, yes, on the label we use, it shows Taiwan, Zhonghua Mingguo. So we have English and Chinese. <laughs> okay, there's something very special, I guess, among these 206 NOCs. We are the only one who has this kind of experience. How proud, right? <laughs> okay, so the same story showed again on 1968. The Olympic game, Mexico City, Mexico, we use that again, Taiwan, Zhonghua Mingguo, and I bet the Mexican cannot read it, cannot read it, but who cares? As long as there's Zhonghua Mingguo, I'm very happy. Hopefully you're happy, as happy as I am, okay? See, we have some really famous Yang Chuan Guang. It's just so famous, and there's a lot of story behind that. They say the reason he didn't get the gold medal is being, he, he's being drugged. And there are spies 
and uh, from, from the other side who drugged him. So he was so weak, so he got only the silver medal. Oh, of course, they are, they are not official, but there are so many stories. Google that, you, you find, you'll find out. And look at that, the high jump. At that time, this is the way they do the high jump. My young friend, have you ever seen this kind of way to do the high jump? Of course, no. Of course, no. Not even me. I didn't see that kind of way to do the high jump, too. Okay, year 1971. Oh, this is uh, something really, really huge. Really, really huge. We were kicked out. Not kicked out. We lost the representation rights in the United Nations. What, what does that mean? That means we are not recognized by most of the country on Earth as an independent country. Maybe, maybe it's, it's mean to say that, but frankly speaking, it's pretty much like that, pretty much like that. So even worse, our position was replaced by People's Republic of China, the other side, another, the other China. So this is really, really bad. Remember, up to now, starting the year 1949, up to now, what, what are we competing for? Cross the street. What are we competing for? We are competing who was China. Who was China? Now we lost the representation rights in the United Nations and being replaced by the other side of the street. So that make our position very, very difficult. So the hard time really comes, start from here. So what's that to do with sports? You must be heard say, no politics in sports. Oh yeah, no politics in sports in the book. But in the re reality, sorry, politics is everywhere, even in the world of sports. I guess you have some sense already. If you look, up, look back to the story we just told, there are a lot of politics. Okay, so 1971, the tragedy happened. At the year 1972, Olympic Games, Munich, Germany, we are still very lucky. So Germany, quite friendly to us, we still use the Republic of China, but this is in German, okay? So we still use the ROC, ROC. So can the next one, Olympic game, do the same thing. Guess what? 1976, Olympic Games at Montreal, Canada. It's, it's really unlucky because the Canadian government just established diplomatic relations with PRC before the game. So they follow the one China policy. They agree and recognize the other China was the only China. So what they did, they refused to issue visas to our athlete, refused to issue visas to our delegation. So no one from Taiwan can get the visa. So if you don't get the visa, how can you get into that country? How can you be in that game? Anyway, they didn't give us the death penalty. They say, I cannot give you the visa because the China is on the other side. However, if you like to use the name Taiwan, we can issue the visa. I mean, if, if, if this today, oh, Taiwan is great, 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 we take that. But at that time, we are still competing who is the representation of China. And of course, of course, the government will not take it. It's very humiliating. It's very humiliating. We don't take it. And the IOC is not so friendly to us either. So the IOC also determined that the delegation had to use the name Taiwan. So Canadian government and the IOC, they're on the same ground. So we are very lonely at that time. Really, really very lonely. And what can we do? So the only thing we can do is to refuse. So we don't take that. We don't take that. The story gets even worse. On the year 1979, what happened on 1979? 